Backgrounds are similar to sprites in the sense that they are images that appear in your game. However, background images are typically scenery that appear behind and in front of sprites that eventually become interactable objects. Backgrounds and foregrounds are not typically interactable objects. There are ways to create the illusion of your background and foreground being interactable, but that's usually done through objects. Background images are things like the sky, or ground, or foliage, or whatever. As long as it's not interactable, it's a background. The third option in your resource tree is backgrounds. You can create a new background by clicking on the resource drop-down menu and selecting Create Background, which is hotkey shift Control b or you can click on the Create a Background icon on the toolbar, or you can right-click on the Backgrounds folder in the resource tree and then select Create Background. Either way, you'll be presented with a Background Properties window. The first thing you should do is name your background. Much like with previous naming conventions, you want to add a prefix to the name of this resource. Some users of GameMaker will use bck underscore and then the name of the resource. Some users will omit the underscore. Some users might just use the letter b. Personally, I use bg underscore. The reason I do that is because you can also create foregrounds. And for that, I use fg underscore. Either way, just use what works for you. Below the name text field, you'll find the button Load Background. If you click on it, you'll be presented with an Explorer window. These steps should be familiar if you watched the sprites lesson. In this window, you can navigate and select an image you already have on your computer. The supported file types are GameMaker backgrounds, bitmap files, GIF or GIF images, JPEGs, and PNGs. Personally, I prefer PNGs because they can hold a transparency channel and they have lossless color. Once you find the image you want to use, you can check the show preview box to see a preview of your image. Below it, you'll find the size in pixels. At this point, you have three options. You can check off the Make Opaque box. This will eliminate any transparencies in your image, filling it with a color that's at the bottom left pixel of your image. Conversely, you can check the Remove Background box to remove one single color from the background to create a transparency channel. And if you do have a transparency channel, you can check the Smooth Edge box. This will give a feather to the edges of your image. Once you're satisfied with the look of your image, you can click the Open button. Back in the Background Properties window, below the Load Background button, you'll see the button Edit Background. Clicking on it will bring up the Image Editor. I've already done a lesson on the Image Editor, so you can view that at this point. Below the Edit Background button, you'll see the width and height of your background in pixels. The checkboxes below your width and height are for more intermediate and advanced use. 